Right, thanks everyone. We're into the second to last session and we're going back to Power BI again for Sahel. So I'm um, looking forward to, to this session. I've got to know, I don't know what content certification is, but I'm sure we're going to learn all about it right now. So hand over to Super Sahel. Easy. Yeah. Just wait yeah. five minutes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Business Application Summit. It's really, really exciting that we are back in person. You know, that was actually my first question when I got an email from uh, Andrew Kravitz. That I did in person or things. You know, I'm really, really sick of looking at monitor. You know, pretending that someone or some of them are sitting in front of me and they are actually listening and they are not slapping the cup of coffee or something. Anyways, so content certification in Power BI is the topic of today's session. Let me see if my mouse click works. Yes, there you go. So who am I? I am Sohail uh, Bakshi. Bakshi is the pronunciation in Persian. I'm from Iran originally, right? So uh, if you are from South Africa, you can pronounce it perfectly. And I'm a uh, Microsoft MVP. I'm a consultant. Uh, as you can tell, I'm predominantly working on uh, Power BI, so I uh, write some technical blog posts on my website, biinsight.com. I authored two books so far about Power BI and another one about uh, 15 years back in Persian, so it is not useful for you, for you guys. And that wasn't about Power BI, it was just about computer science. Uh, the First one was the uh, that is an ebook and it is free. It is a collaboration between myself and Peak Assistance. It's the ultimate. And the other one is Expert Power BI Data Modeling. If you want to see it in flesh, it's here. Right? And it is for whoever asks a good question or answers my good questions. Okay. And uh, I'm a startup owner uh, at Paper Visioner. We predominantly again work on Power BI. We've we'll built tools on top of Power BI. We've so far created two tools. One is to um, sort of automating the documentation of Power BI, and the other one is Power BI Exporter to export the curated data from your data model into CSV format from Power BI desktop. And uh, there are external tools for both of them uh, as well. You can get in touch with me through my website, and I'll be glad if you um, connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on Twitter. The agenda, agenda for today, we'll talk about uh, how we are contents, and we see what content means from how we are perspective. Uh, content certification in Power BI, enabling content certification, endorsing content in Power BI, and we will talk about um, Power BI, cert well, certification processes, and the first one is not necessarily about Power BI, it is about the data sources, right? And I will tell you why it is important, and then question and answer. So while this is in person, you can raise your hand and ask questions anytime that you like, right? Great. First question, who knows what is content in Power BI? Not Joe. What else? Maybe I take one step back. What is Power BI? <laughs> it is not. No, Power BI is a platform. It is not a reporting to own it. Okay, so what does content mean in Power BI? When you go to Power BI service, you have data sets, you have reports, you have dashboards, apps, paginated reports, data flows, and guess what? Many others. These are contents in Power BI. Okay, so, and yeah, you can upload your Excel workbooks 
as a Excel file, and you can work with it like you usually do in Excel online, or you can turn it to a data set. Okay, what if you have a power pivot model in your Excel file and you publish it to our BMI service? This is totally irrelevant to the topic. I'm just curious to know how many of you know them. Okay, your data model in Power Pivot is actually the legacy version of Power BI. Power BI is consistent of Power Pivot, Power Query, Power Map, and I don't know, maybe another one in Excel, which used to be Excel add ons, and they are now packed into a single product on the desk, desktop, the desktop application of it. It's called Power BI Desktop, right? So if you have a Power Pivot data model, you can actually upload the data model or publish your data model, existing data model, as a data set into Power BI service. You don't really need to convert it to Power BI. You already built it. You can just publish it and use it. Okay. Content certification in Power BI. Content certification is a part of Power BI endorsement. Endorsement is a feature to label supported content based on their trustworthiness. And endorsement clients, have you ever heard about endorsements in Albion? Have you used it? So we have two types of endorsements. One is promotion which is enabled uh, by the users to highlight the valuable and worthy content. Remember, content is not only the data, it's about reports and dashboards and the rest of the thing. So if you are promoting a content as a user, you think that the content is valuable and you think that it is high quality. So you can promote it, right? In larger organizations, since there are not a lot of controls around promoting content, but in large organizations, uh, it is down to training and educating the users, not to promote all the content that you think they are good, maybe they are not as good as you think they are, right? And certification, is the content when the content meets the organizational quality, security, and reliability standards. I think I could add some other commas in between. Whatever you think that is about quality of work, if you are talking about data, like data quality, if you are talking about reports, data visualization quality, have we followed? Uh, best practices and so on and so forth. And have we followed standards? There are standards in place. And standards are a part of your organization's uh, governance policies. Right? If you follow all those policies and if the content that you built or created is good enough and is trustworthy, then you can say the If you are allowed. Very good question. It is available in Power BI service, and you do not require to have premium capacity or premium per user. But you need to have pro license because using board spaces is a pro feature and not even free, right? And it doesn't really make sense because when you say free, it is just one user and it's you yourself. So you can set it by you can do whatever you want, right? Okay, so uh, the contents that currently support certification, out of those many, data sets, reports, apps, and data flows, only those four currently support certification. 
when you promote the content or certify it, it comes with a badge that you will see on the next pages. Enabling content certification in Power BI. So, uh, let me make it clear. When we say Power BI, in the community, we are generally referring to Power BI platform as a whole. It is not referred to Power BI desktop. Power BI desktop is only one report authoring and data modeling tool within the platform. There are a couple of others, something like Power BI desktop uh, optimized for report server, paginated report, mobile available. So, uh, and, and Excel. Right? So, Power BI desktop is just one of those. Who can enable content certification? Any thoughts? The owner, the owner of the the owner of data or the owner of content. Any other thoughts? Okay. Power BI administrator is the one who can enable certification across the tenant. Look, I am deliberately and correctly using the term certification. I'm not talking about promoting. Because promotion, there is no such control in our service board. But when you're talking about certification, you must be really careful. You have to follow a lot of standards and best practices to be able to uh, label the content as certified, right? And from there, now you are one step further, right? So, how we are administrators are the ones who can enable certification across your Power BI dependent, but where? Correct. From Power BI admin portal, right? How? And here is how you go to Power BI admin portal. Click on the gearbox, go to admin portal under export and sharing settings. And then on the certification. You can apply. Specific users for security. And then you click OK. As you can see, you can also add. Um, a URL to the documentation. So, for instance, if you have a SharePoint site which is explaining the process of content certification, you can put that in here. That way it will be. Whoever who is a member of a security group. Okay, now endorsing content in Power BI. Let's see how we can endorse a data set. This is how you go to the workspace. And if you hover over the data set, ellipse button shows up. You click on it and go to the setting. And from endorsement and discovery, you can certify it and you can make it discoverable for your audience. And you then click upon. After you do this, if you go to Data Hub, which is your data hub, can get all the data set available to you. You will see the certified bank on the right hand side of it. Obviously, it is also visible in the workspace. The next one is a report. How to certify a report? It's uh, fairly simple and very similar steps. So you go to settings, report settings, and then you certify it. Another question. What happens if I am not a member of the security group that are allowed to certify the content? What happens to me? What do I see? Look, it is under this setting is under endorsement. What happens? There? The 
see in general? What you see in general? That is the diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the certified one will be disabled, not the rest of it. As I mentioned, since certification is a part of endorsement picture, promoted is not controlled uh, by the administrative environment. Okay, great. And apps, we can also certify an app. What we need to do, we need to uh, navigate to the workspace that we are creating an app upon. Click on the ellipse button top. If we've already created an app, that ellipse button will show up. And then click on endorse this app and then certified and then up. So you can consider this as a uh, small demo. After you certified your app, you can go to apps and you will see the certified badge on the right hand side of the app. It's the same process or very similar process for data flows. Again, you go to settings, endorsement, certified, apply. Right? And your uh, data flows will be certified. Any question, please? Certification applies in uh, our BI service, and well, that's why there must be a sort of standards for a certified data set. So, if you are overwriting a data set, the new version of it <coughs> must be also good enough. That was a very good question indeed. Okay, certification processes. What do we have about uh, certification processes? So, uh, certification processes also include, in general, data source certification. That's generic rule of thumb. Rubbish in, rubbish out. Right? So, if we create a very well built data model in Power BI, and we followed all the best practices in, in Power Query, in the data modeling, and data visualization, apps, everything, right? If the quality of data that comes in is rubbish, then. So, data source certification is a really wide topic. Well, certification as a whole is a really wide topic, right? Let's see what does that mean. It is, it means that you follow best practices on every single one of those. Right. Data source certification. We have, well, well many of you perhaps uh, heard about it from silver and gold. Right. These are the definitions of uh, generally understood data quality levels. In our BI pairs, certification. So your bronze data is not trustworthy. It is not located in organizational storage. It is on someone's Google Drive or OneDrive, and they own the content, the data, everything, and <laughs> they manage it themselves. Right? So by all means, if in your organization, uh, someone created a report on top of an Excel file, which is in their own OneDrive, it is definitely bronze. And it is a no-no in many organizations, right? So, as you can see, it is. It can get very close to, uh, uh, to governance. And not only Power BI, but data governance as office, which is a part of organizational governance. Right? Silver is semi-trusted data located in organizational storage. Um, mixed ownership. In some cases, 
uh, people are putting something in their OneDrive for business, not their personal OneDrive. It is in OneDrive for business, and the data quality is mm, fair, right? But everything is managed by organization because it is OneDrive for business and admin service. And Go is highly trusted data, so the data quality is good. The location is fully controlled, owned, and managed by the organization, so everything is top notch. It is Go plated uh, solution platform data content. Right? So, this is a just, just uh, touching a little bit about uh, the data source uh, uh, certification or uh, quality, if you want. It is more about trustworthy. And the data is not trustworthy if it is not governed and managed by the organization in a defined way. So that is where the standards come in. Any questions? Yes, please. But a camper in the case, I think it's still means get to the thing up. Who manages it's a noise. Who manages it? I think it's also for me. If you if the organization have a contract with third party who are managing the content for you, then it is trustworthy, can be trustworthy. And it is not only about the location, it is about the quality of data as well, quality of content as well. Right? Who manages it? Who owns it? So I suppose if you are uh, dealing with a third party, you can have some uh, agreements. They are managing your content, but you are the owner. In many cases, the answer is yes. I didn't want to say it depends because everyone is saying it and then people are uh, you know, starting to hate this, this term, but it, it actually depends. You know? It depends on how you treat your reporting replica, right? If you are putting somewhere that everyone can access it, no. well, not. It is not. Cross it. <laughs> so even access control, every, everything must be controlled. When it is governed and controlled, then yes, it is gold plated data and it is certified. So the same concept applies to Power BI content. Right? So let's see what we have here. There are many things when it comes to best practices. I just cherry pick some of those and I put it uh, in here. All right. So uh, for get data, for instance, when you are the, okay. So first question: Are you connected to the correct environment? I have been in a position that I was saying everything is wrong. Man, what is happening here? And it, yes, it was me. I, I was a developer. And I was connected to UAT while I published the solution into production. I just forgot to switch the data source into production data source. Right? So that is the first question. The second one is uh, on-premises data gateway required. Right? Uh, we just jump into both solutions, but Power BI is uh, simple, it is easy to work with, and everyone loves it. Yeah, you, you can do whatever you want. You publish your reporting and your customer takes the phone and call you and say, hey, so hey, uh, the report doesn't work. It says it needs something called the gateway. And you start scratching your head. Oh, man source was in their local network drive uh, network drive or their local network right the storage technology mm, locally stored files are they locally stored on someone's machine are you connecting to a network drive or are they actually stored and shared on online then you take it there are different ways if you want to connect 
to an Excel file when it is in a network drive or it is stored on SharePoint or it is stored in a Keep on conversing you your question. So I, I suppose I think the question is I have an Excel file that the data is getting up to date. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have a Power BI solution which is connected to that Excel file and maybe some other data sources, right? Is the uh, Power BI solution affected by the data which is updated in Excel? If you enable and if you configure the um, uh, data set uh, schedule refresh on Power BI service, then it will. Yeah, yeah, it depends on how you um, schedule your yeah. So if you on the pro licensing plan, I think we have only eight refreshes a day, right? So it depends. Some organizations uh, decide to refresh the data every hour, but use that eight hours a day, eight times a day during the eight hours a day of some just don't really require it. Yeah. 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 Ah, normal desktop. No, 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 it does. It does. Is your normal desktop, which you say normal desktop, I say abnormal. It is an abnormal solution, right? Is it accessible? But how of your service, you need a gateway. Whatever is in your local network is not exposed to the cloud. To expose your uh, resources, your local resources to the cloud, you need gateway, which is yeah. Okay. Um, one drug is a cloud resource. When you can um, authenticate through the, you know, uh, Power BI service, you're good to go. Okay, so uh, I'm not too sure if you read through all of those words, and I'm not going to read it for you, but uh, I picked some things that are, uh, in my mind, very important. And the first one is prepare your data model with the star schema approach in mind. Right. So, data modeling is not only when you load your data into Power BI and write really efficient DAX and create the relationships and manage relationships really well and, I don't know, use the uh, correct storage mod, uh, evident import or direct for whatever. And it's not only that, it starts before load the data into Power BI data model. It starts with our query. Our query is actually a pipeline. Right? It is a sort of ETL pipeline with extraction and formation and load pipeline. It does not store the data while you are in our query. It stores the data in your data model store, right? Okay, next data modeling. Disable auto date time feature. Okay, so th this can be, well, it, this list is a really massive list. It can be a 800, 900 page book. Okay. So I didn't try to pick some. But if you are thinking about content certification and certification processes, right, organizations must have at least a checklist that someone is going through every single solution that is going to be certified and it must meet all the requirements. Right. So, uh, avoid creating calculated columns when possible. Um, 
avoid using many-to-many -many relationships and by many-to-many -many relationships i'm referring to the when you double click on a relationship and make it many to many you know the many to many relationship because the, the other way well building many to many relationships is inevitable when you're talking about star schema if we have two dimensions and one fact table in the middle those two dimensions are in many to many relationship through the fact table right? and uh, Use fixed decimal point data types instead of float. It increases the performance, if then your data would be uh, compressed much better because uh, the precision here makes your data uh, less uh, duplicated. The way that X velocity engine in tabular model works is compresses data based on column store technology. Right? In column store, it looks at the column and looks at the cardinality, cardinality of, of the data in that column, right? The more, uh, the higher the cardinality, the lower the compression that happens in your data model. Okay, next is about data flows. Whatever applies to Power Query applies to data flows. But the data flow is active and Power Query online, right? But there are some other points that you have to be aware of. So it's something like integrate um, your data flows with organization on Azure Data Lake Gen 2 when possible. If your organization or where you can have uh, Data Lake Gen 2, it is best that you can integrate your workspaces with um, Data Lake Gen 2. In that way, it stores data into your organizational uh, data instead of the internal data lake gender available in Power BI. The other one on the list is leveraging computer tables to break down complex logic into separate uh, data flows. Instead of creating one data flow, which is, which is carrying on a lot of doom, a lot of complex transformation um, sets, it is best to break it down to many data flows. And using linked tables when possible. Linked tables do not store the data again. Right? It is just like views and SQL Server. Uh, Power BI, well, data visualization in general. It's not ju just about reports, the dashboards as well, but we cannot certify dashboards. Uh, we can certify reports. Okay, so. Uh, there is a five second rule when you are visualizing data. Do you know what five second rule is? Pardon me? Five second rule. <laughs> five second rules means that if you build a data, if you visualize a data, your data visualization, you put it on in front of your audience, the audience will have five seconds to get a general understanding of the report. What you want to tell them, only five seconds, right? So something like, okay, in that case, it, it, it's a really hard thing to do, right? So having a title at top would help a lot, right? Something like uh, retail sales analysis, two seconds from. You have only three, four seconds to understand what else here, right? And uh, avoid using decorations which are unrelated to the data, something like emojis. Believe me, I've seen emojis in measure names in data models. <laughs> Someone thinks that it is cool. Really? We cannot even have it in, well, we can have it if, if I'm building something for my six year old daughter. Yeah, yeah, that works. But not for a serious thing and uh, that I want to present in front of the board, right? Avoid putting organizational data at the top of report pages. Real estate is very valuable in report. That is actually one of the elements when you're the data. And uh, yeah, so there is a feature which is called 
uh, branding that you can set in Power BI service. You can apply the logo in Power BI service and it appears on all pages, including reports. Right? Apps. Because apps, uh, a Power BI app is when you activate many contents that are in a workspace, Power BI workspace, you have to follow best practices for every single one of those contents. Data sets, data flows, reports, and uh, all, all of those power query, data modeling, everything, right? And you can actually uh, put the documentation and, and it is it is one of the other uh, uh, good practices to have documentation of the report within the app, right? Uh, I can quickly show you if I have time afterwards, right? Who certifies the content? Usually there are roles for them, data stewards, data quality assurance experts, BI architects. Whoever who is going to certify the content, they must know a lot about it that they are certifying that in very full of thumb about the content. Okay, so what is next? Question, why? Anyone have any question? That is the end of my thing. Any question? Did you start with why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Actually, that's a legitimate question. Why? Why certification? Yeah, because if you do not have certified data set, CEO is actually a uh, computer sample in my own people, my own report. How do I trust data that is in front of me? I know that I have a team of experts backing me up, right? Great stuff. So I have a book here and I don't know who I should give it to, right? It's yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for a lot of people in photo the last few slides. I think you guys like some really and specific approach. You've got some good tips in general on how to convene the Power BI report. Where I think what I like with the one around yeah, the layout, the five second rule, like, yeah, I mean, I almost want to think we need to have this sort of process for power apps as well, right? So mm -hmm. we've all seen the terrible app, the terrible data, <laughs> um, you know, not user friendly. And I think those same sorts of things and processes would be quite good to apply to apps and help them for practices. How long does five second rule come? Yeah, that's what I heard from you. I thought it was the loading time. Oh, I thought <laughs> to understand the whole thing. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I really don't know who should get the book. Maybe I ask a question. Okay, bro. And uh, do I have time? You don't yet. Yeah, we're not time. Okay, great stuff. So, one question that I can think of. Right. Um, Ask a question. Why do you ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> It means the data that you are connected to the data source, the zone of the name, whatever it is, right? Is the data in there is really trustworthy? Or whenever you, and, and it really doesn't matter if you are connecting to the source system with Excel, with Power BI, with Tableau, whatever you are using, right? It doesn't really matter. But 
when you uh, create a financial report, and you get the correct data set, and you dig down and you find some glitching, they are actually there is something this is out there. Right? It's just, just a type of thing. Or, or a hidden character, something like uh, I've seen this before, because there was a, a customer that, uh, on top of other all the other analysis that they wanted to uh, do, there was a text box in there, right? Where free text, right? And they wanted to analyze that because they had a pattern that the guy who is managing it had to follow, but uh, not always people follow, but you say there was a lot of enters, a lot of hidden characters, and it was breaking the whole thing, right? Which is not really evident at the first place. And if you look at it, you say, no, that's actually. Yeah, wrong with it. When you go to Power Query, Power Query says, oh, no, I cannot find this column. Say, well, it is there. What do you mean? And you get there and say, oh, actually, there are uh, line uh, line feeds and returns in there, right? So those are special characters that haven't been managed, right? Data quality is, is, is a very wide topic, right? Uh, so, and, and that's why there is a dedicated service in SQL Server, data quality service, not a lot of organizations that are using it, but it's expensive, requires expensive experts. Data steward must do it, and they are experts in S, you know, they are actually SMEs, who know the business very well, and they know the data very well, and they also know um, data quality services very well. Thank you very much for your question, and book it yours.